Hey everybody, welcome back. Jim here with another pickups video. Yes indeed. Uh, it's time again for the, the easiest of all the gaming channel videos, the pickups video. Um, but I got some pretty cool stuff recently. Um, if you saw, I uh, recently uh, came into possession of a Nintendo Switch. And so I've been buying box sets and things like that. You may have seen some cool little unboxings here and there. Uh, so I picked up some Switch games, and then I also picked up uh, a bunch of Sega stuff uh, this time around. So let's jump right into it. Uh, first up, a uh, game pretty much everyone has played. Uh, I did pick up a copy of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, because I had not yet played this game. And uh, absolutely lo uh, loving it. Obviously it's Mario Kart, so it's like it's super fun. Uh, you can never go wrong with a good Mario Kart game, so I've been playing the hell out of it. Um, you know, trying to get the best on uh, all the different uh, difficulty settings and, and racing against uh, other people and uh, uh, battle mode is incredibly fun. Uh, so I've been having a lot of uh, a lot of fun with this. I have not finished all of the Grand Prix yet. I'm in the 150 CCs. I'm trying to get uh, first place trophies and three stars and everything, and uh, I'm almost there. But I've been playing this a lot on the train actually on my way to work. Um, this is very convenient because. Um, the train that takes me from Shinjuku to the station next to my job uh, takes about a half an hour. So um, typically I can get through like one or two Grand Prix in this or play through a Grand Prix and then uh, maybe a little bit of battle mode or something or a time attack. Uh, so this has been a lot of, uh, a lot of fun on the uh, train rides to work. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, amazing game, but you already knew that most likely if, you, if you've played it. Uh, if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Um, I also picked up a copy of Umihara Kawase Fresh, and um, I the only Umihara Kawase game I had played before this was uh, Shun on the uh, PlayStation. Actually, it was Import Game of the Day uh, one day, uh, so I really, really did enjoy that. I liked the uh, Umihara Kawase uh, gameplay style with the, the fishing line, and it's like uh, kind of a rubber bandy thing. I like the physics of it, and I like uh, the calm, peaceful vibe to it, so I picked this up, hoping that it would be more of the same. Uh, and for the most part, it is, um, but this one has like a narrative that holds it together. Uh, you're um, in this uh, town, and you're working uh, for this restaurant, and like delivering food. Um, so for the most part, it's kind of like you're doing a, a delivery uh, thing, so you, you'll be started off in this area or that area, and you have to traverse or like find items or get to some endpoint. Uh, there's lots of stuff to find and, and collect, different types of like vegetables and fruits and uh, mushrooms and all kinds of things. Things you can get from your enemies and a lot of your enemies are going to be like fish and sea creatures. So you can use them too and you can incorporate them into things that you can cook. And uh, it's pretty cool. So the graphical style, it's, it's very, uh, you know, cartoony, um, very simple looking. I, how much did I pay for this? I imagine it was some kind of budget title though, but anyway, uh, Umihara Kawase Fresh, the gameplay is still really fun, uh, it's very simple, it is a very uh, relaxing game to play, uh, the soundtrack, the visuals, all of that is really nice, um, so yeah, uh, if you can uh, play Umihara Kawase Fresh, especially if you like the previous games in the series, uh, this is pretty fun, I like it a lot. Got to keep the throat lubricated. Amongst other things, am I right? Eh, am I right? Um, anyway, uh, the uh, other game I got for the Switch uh, just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. As I was coming home from work, I popped into the uh, book off that's directly next to uh, where I work, and I picked up this, uh, the Capcom uh, Belt Scroller Collection, or, or Belt Action Collection. Uh, this is a whole bunch of Capcom arcade beat-em-ups. So you've got Final Fight, King of Dragons, Captain Commando, Knights of the Round, um, uh, Tenshio Kurao 2, which I believe is Warriors of Fate, uh, Power Gear, which is Metal Warriors, I think, and you also have a uh, Battle Circuit. So just uh, some really amazing uh, Capcom arcade beat-em-ups. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, the only thing missing from this game, though, is Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. I would have loved to have seen that. 
Um, but uh, yeah, picked it up last night, got home from work, uh, played through uh, Power Gear, and then uh, played through Captain Commando as well. And uh, looking forward to playing uh, Battle Circuit, actually. I think that's the only one on here that I haven't actually uh, played before. Uh, but yeah, no Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Other than that, this is a great collection of Capcom Arcade Beat-em-Ups. Uh, cannot complain about that. Uh, next up, okay, stack of Sega games here. Um, for the Mega Drive, this is something uh, published by Columbus Circle. They've been pr publishing all kinds of great stuff. Uh, uh, the uh, oh, Ultra Core on the Mega Drive, uh, they, I guess they published, I don't know if they published all the physical copies of that, but the Japanese version is published by uh, Columbus Circle, as well as they published like Shibiban Man Zero, and uh, Kira Kira Star Knight, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, they've been publishing cool stuff. Anyway, 16-bit uh, Rhythm Land uh, for the Mega Drive. Uh, this is sort of similar to like Kita Kita Star Knight DX, which was a game that where it's it's a very very simple game, um, and mostly it was meant to just like showcase a bunch of the music that people had uh, made with the like 8-bit Music Maker uh, Famicom cartridge that they had put out. Um, so this there's a whole lot of um, music that's been made with the uh, Mega Drive sound chip that all sounds pretty cool, and there are a whole bunch of rhythm mini games you can play to that music. Little like uh, there's a baseball one where you swing in time with the music, uh, and little like shoot 'em up games too. One is like uh, kind of like Space Invaders, and another one is more of like it's like a side-scrolling thing, but you hit it to blast the um, uh, they're like little things like propulsion things coming out, and you have to hit them in the right uh, order with the music, otherwise you die. Uh, anyway, and there are a couple other games too. So this is a very very simple game. Uh, I think it was like uh, about 40 bucks or less than 40 bucks, and uh, mostly you just you, you pick it up to appreciate the cool music, uh, but there are some fun mini games thrown in as well, and uh, you know cool box and everything. So uh, I'm not complaining. 16-bit uh, Rhythm Land on the Mega Drive that was pretty cool. Uh, one Dreamcast game I picked up. Uh, if anybody watched the last book off video I did when I went to the book off. In Akihabara, I picked up one game there because a lot of their prices were insane. But this was like you know 12 or 13 bucks, so that was fine. But uh, Dino Crisis on the Dream Clat, Dream Clast, yes, Dream Clast, uh, with all the glare you can handle. Um, so yeah, Dino Crisis on the Dreamcast, uh, great game. Uh, I loved it on the PlayStation and enjoyed Dino Crisis 2 as well. Uh, so when I came across the Dreamcast version for like, I don't know, 12, 13 bucks, I was like, absolutely, because it was in great shape, spine card, everything. Uh, so I'm not complaining at all. Uh, I like this game. Obviously, just, you know, graphically improved over the PS1 version and plays pretty pretty damn well with the, um, the Dreamcast controller. It's just like the uh, Biohazard games, like Biohazard 2 on the Dreamcast is like my favorite version of that game for whatever reason. I just like the way it controls and the way it looks and the VMU and everything. Um, so same thing with Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis on the Dreamcast. Very good version of this game. Very happy I picked it up. Good thing I stopped in the book off that day. Uh, and the rest of these are Sega Saturn games. Uh, this one, uh, a game I picked up, I looked at all my Saturn fighting games and I was like, how do I not have this game? Uh, Vampire Hunter for the Sega Saturn. Uh, and I do believe I had this at one point. I probably sold it like when it, the last time I was in Texas or something. Um, so Vampire Hunter, just a, you know, great game, the Darkstalker series, uh, I pretty much picked it up because I wanted to do a review on it, because as I move forward with my show Reviewkin series, I pretty much want to cover, like, every Capcom fighter ever, amongst other things. Uh, so I wanted to pick this one up, because I want to cover all of the Darkstalkers games at some point, and, um, it was 300 yen at Sudagaya, so less than three dollars for a nice copy of Vampire Hunter, which I immediately took home and started playing and capturing footage for. And uh, I don't know when the review on this is going to be up. It may have already been up. You may have seen it already. I have no idea. But uh, Vampire Hunter on the Sega Saturn. Great game. Looks great. Sounds great. Plays great. Uh, I love Darkstalkers. Always have. Uh, so very happy to have that in the collection. And uh, I thought it was just like odd that I didn't have it uh, already. Because, you know, I love the series. Um, this game amazing game on the Sega Saturn. Um, this is one of those like hidden gems or whatever of uh, the Japan only Saturn games, but I picked up a copy of Bulk Slash 
Bulk Slash by Hudson Soft. This is a great um, sort of like mech action game where you can transform between a mech and it can turn into like a jet and you can go flying around. But basically you're going to fly around a bunch of different stages and you're going to blow up a bunch of stuff. Different stages have different objectives. So there might be something you have to blow up or a bunch of things you have to blow up or a boss appears at the end and you have to kill a boss or there might be an escort mission or one mission where you're picking up bombs and then taking them through, you know, navigating through enemies to take them to the target and basically bomb the target. Um, but good game, uh, fun gameplay. It took me a little bit of time to get accustomed to the controls. It wasn't like super intuitive, um, but eventually I, I was having a lot of fun with this game. Um, graphics are great, very colorful. You know, for a Saturn 3D game, uh, looks pretty damn good. Really good soundtrack, really great uh, anime, like character designs, cool cutscenes and stuff. Um, so yeah, Bulk Slash, I am having a lot of fun with this game. And uh, definitely at some point in the future, whether it's, I don't know, uh, Import Game of the Day, or Show Reviewkin, or uh, another one of the future buying guys I'm going to be doing with uh, Sawamaru, uh, I'll definitely be going more in-depth on Bulk Slash. But for now, uh, just know that I really like this game. It's awesome. Bulk Slash, Sega Saturn, and then the last game I picked up, um, I would say maybe about a month ago, uh, I had a, an especially good month uh, financially, so I wanted to uh, reward myself just a little bit, so I picked up something uh, that I had been wanting for a very long time, and that is this game right here, Hyper Duel for the Sega Saturn. Um, anybody that knows this game knows that it, it's pretty damn expensive, but it's also just an awesome shoot 'em up Again, I'm a huge shooter fan, uh, especially I love my Sega Saturn shooters. So, um, had to have me my copy of, of Hyper Duel, a uh, great game, um, made by Technosoft, who also made the, you know, the Thunder Force games, and, uh, you know, just a whole bunch of really great, uh, shoot 'em ups as well as, like, I don't know, uh, Pinball, and they made, um, uh, Neketsu Oyako, a really great beat-em-up. They made a lot of stuff, but mostly their shoot-em-ups is, is what they're known for. Uh, so yeah, Hyper Duel, amazing game. You transform between mech and uh, fighter ship, and just blast everything in sight. Great graphics, great sound design. You can play the arcade or Saturn modes on this, and uh, just really just awesome. One of my new favorite Saturn shoot-em-ups, uh, which is saying a lot because Saturn shooters, by and large, are pretty damn good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Hyper Duel by Technosoft on the Sega Saturn. It was not cheap, but I'm happy that I have it, and you can definitely bet your ass uh, that sometime in the near future I'm going to be covering this game in depth, uh, full review, the works. Uh, I like this game a lot, and I want to do it justice, and I can't really do that in a pickups video. So for now, all I can say is Hyper Duel. I like it a lot. It's awesome. And those are the pickups, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so that'll do her, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, definitely let me know down in the comments what you thought of some of these games, if you've played them, and if you what you would like to see covered more in-depth, because Show Review can uh, import Game of the Day. I'm trying to keep both of those series going at the same time now. Uh, so plenty of time to cover games on this channel. So let me know what you think down in the comments. I always enjoy reading them. Um, don't always have the time to respond to all the comments as much as I would like. Uh, but rest assured, I definitely do read all of them. Uh, so thank you very much for subscribing and commenting and liking and all that stuff, etc., etc. You know, the stuff you say at the end of a YouTube video. And that'll do her. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.